An ordinary high school student called Matou Mitsuki is in the middle of his meal when he suddenly teleported into another dimension. He's shocked when he realizes he's floating above a giant arena with mysterious symbols on the ground. At that moment, he falls down and sees strange people around him. He's confronted by the king of the Grisarika kingdom and a sorcerer by his side. They measure Matou's powers, the powers called pure concept. While that's happening, Matou is jumping from excitement because he realizes he's in a brand new world where, finally, he's no longer a loser. But his celebration is cut short when guards take Mitsuki and throw him out of the castle gates. He's banished from the kingdom, sad and alone. He walks aimlessly until just curling up in a ball under a small bridge in the kingdom. At that moment, a girl screams in his ear, He's surprised and for a moment scared, but they get to talking and she introduces herself. She's a priestess named Minou and she offers to help him. She tells him he's been brought to this world like many before as he's one of the chosen ones with powers called the Lost Ones. She also explains the hierarchy of this whole world. There are poor commoners who just barely survive, as well as the nobility. The nobles are split into noblesse and the church, the Faust. They slowly start exploring together. During their walk through a local town, Mitsuki reveals that the reason he was banished is because the king and his royals said he had no powers. He also recalls that there was another girl that was transported from Japan like him. This piques the interest of his companion Minou. They continue their journey until they reach an abandoned church, and Mitsuki tries to test if he has any powers. After some inspiration by Minou, he finally activates his power and destroys part of the altar. They both realize his powers are to nullify anything he wants. He gets excited, finally learning he can do whatever he wants in this world. But the excitement ends when, in a shocking twist, Mino takes out a knife and stabs Mitsuki in the head. He dies in shock, bleeding all over the floor. Mino, for a moment, feels saddened. But this is her duty, because really, she's an assassin for the church, and her mission is to kill all the lost ones before they can destroy her world. She later informs the Archbishop Orwell about her successful mission, and also that there's another lost one. That girl summoned after Mitsuki. For a moment, Minou remembers her past, her village being completely destroyed by a lost one years ago, when all the people were turned into ash. She also remembers her mentor, Flair, who saved her. Minou gets ready to assassinate the unnamed girl. She's aided by Momo, her helper, who's comically obsessed with her. The assault begins and Mino engages in combat with the castle soldiers. They reveal the king's intentions to use the girl's powers to overtake and defeat the church. With ease, Mino kills all the soldiers and makes her way to the girl. The girl is named Akari and her powers seem to be healing. After offering to help Akari, Mino is swift and, like with previous lost ones, she assassinates her. But after she dies, Akari's true powers activate. Mino is shocked as she watches Akari totally regenerate and be brought back to life. She doesn't have healing abilities. She can turn back time. Akari has no idea what happened, not remembering her death at all. Mino is confused and she contacts Orwell and informs him Akari cannot be killed. She orders Mino to bring Akari to her so that they can perform a ritual that's certain to kill her. Mino manages to convince Ikari that in three days a ceremony will be performed and she'll be sent back home to Japan. Mino is confused by Ikari as she's disappointed that she will have to leave. She wants to spend more time with Mino. Meanwhile, King Grisarika is arrested by the church for heretic behavior and also Momo is disappointed that her leader Mino needs to spend time with the target. She secretly follows Mino and Ikari on their travels to the ceremony. Minou explains to Akari that she cannot use her powers in any way as they'll draw too much attention. But Akari just can't help herself. While waiting for their train, Akari runs into a little girl and she can't resist healing her injuries. Minou sees local royal soldiers approaching, so she uses her conjuring powers to create magical bubbles. This gives them enough time to get on the train without being noticed by the soldiers. Warrior Princess Ashuna also boards the train in secret running from her own troubles, but she's spotted by Momo. While the train departs the station, Akari is excited about the upcoming adventure, while Mino remains silent. She feels sorry for what she's doing and what will happen to Akari in just three days' time. 
Meanwhile, during the train ride, attackers start to take over the train. Their target is Princess Ashuna, the daughter of the king who has been accused of heresy. Their goal is to trade Ashuna for their leader, who's imprisoned. Momo finds the princess on the roof of the train. After a brief introduction, Princess Ashuna attacks Momo with lightning speed. Their fight goes on for a while before they both fall off the train. Meanwhile, the terrorists find Mano and order her to drop her spellbook as well as to undress completely. Akari steps in and volunteers to undress, but before she can, Mano beats up the attackers. They both agree Akari needs to stay back. Mano defeats the remaining attackers but finds out they're on a suicide mission as they've swallowed ether crystals. The crystals absorb their bodies and create an armored creature that attacks the train. The armored warrior damages the train and its engines. Because of that, the train's out of control and it'll crash soon. Suddenly, Mano, Ashuna, and Momo all experience a strange feeling, an incredible sensation of deja vu. Akari joins Mano in her battle against the armored warrior. Mano is angry because Akari is once again risking herself. She instructs Akari to use her powers in a more defensive manner to protect herself and others. After they defeat the warrior, they realize the train needs to be stopped before it crashes. But the problem is, Mano has been weakened by her fight and doesn't have enough magic to stop it on her own. To stop the train, Mano agrees to combine and borrow power from Akari. Mano explains that the process usually hurts, but in their case, it's seamless. With their combined magic, Mano casts a giant spell, stopping the train right before it crashes. Ikari and Mano celebrate their victory. Momo and Ashuna are still fighting when the morning arrives, both exhausted and annoyed. Meanwhile, the passengers happily get off the train. Akari even meets the girl she previously healed. While this is happening, Mano senses something strange. She sees brief images of her death and the entire train crashing, killing everyone. She wonders if that had happened and Akari turned back time. This means Akari may have reversed time for the entire world by several minutes and saved all the passengers. Mano and Akari continue their journey to Garm, where the ceremony will kill Akari. Minou remembers her life growing up, how she was rescued by the assassin Flair. Because of what she experienced as a child, Mano had her soul corrupted and that rendered her emotionless, without desire or reason to live. She only followed Flair on her journeys. She watched Flair kill countless lost ones and that inspired her to follow in her footsteps. Flair warned Mano that this wouldn't be an easy life and that she would actually become a villain, but Mano was determined. Flair decided to mold Mano in her own image, making a perfect weapon. In the present, all of them have finally arrived in Garm. Akari asked Mano to take her on a special date. She wants to explore the city together and have fun. In the meantime, Orwell welcomes them and says that the special ceremony will be fully ready in just two days. Mano is also asked to investigate several disappearances of young girls that have happened recently. This angers Akari because it means their date won't happen. Later, when they arrive at the hotel, she's extremely angry at Mano and feels like she chose the investigation rather than spending time with her. This touches Mano. Impressed by Momo and how she was able to handle her battle with Ashuna, Mano gives her the investigation, so this gives her time to take Akari on that special date. After having fun, Mano and Akari make their way to the chamber where the special ceremony will be held. Mano is conflicted as she knows she's about to witness Akari die. Momo tries to get to the bottom of the issue of the missing girls and following the leads, however, she ends up in the city sewers. After exploring there, she finds Ashuna. The princess proposes a temporary alliance so they can figure out what's truly happening in the city of Garm. They make their way through the sewers until they reach the chambers underneath the palace, where they discover a summoning room. This proves that the noblesse in Garm are also making summons, but that was believed to be impossible. The leads make them realize that a high-ranking Faust is also involved. Momo figures out that the only person with that much power is Orwell. She tries to warn Mano, but she and Akari are attacked by monsters. Mano tries to stop the ritual, but soon Orwell reveals her true nature. She wants to erase Akari's memories and use her powers to reverse her own aging and also make herself immortal. 
Orwell also admits kidnapping those women and using them for her own experiments. She sets her eyes on Minohu and wants to use her as a sacrifice, so she summons a giant monster to attack her. During the fight, the Archbishop also admits that she was responsible for the destruction of Minohu's village. It was the result of her experiments. Right before she gets sacrificed, Akari uses her feelings for Mano to break down her mental barriers and uses her powers to their full potential. She later willingly forgets once more what her powers and full potential truly are. In her battle with the monsters, Momo loses control because of a hair ribbon gifted by Mano that was destroyed. She kills the monsters as well as damaging the palace and the cathedral. Akari and Mano join forces again and defeat Orwell. But during their joining, their powers show them a frightening future. It shows that Akari, at some point, kills Minou. Akari is horrified and wishes that Minou would kill her before that ever happens. Do you wish to see what happened? Like and subscribe for more anime recaps like this, and make sure to click that bell button to stay updated when the second part of this video comes out. That's it for today, and I'll see you all next week.